how to protect yourself at music festivals. My name is Jessica and this is my story. My name is Jessica Johnson. If you're new here, well, this is quite the video to <laughs> meet me on because um, this is easily one of the hardest things I have ever been through. This video has taken me a long time to make uh, because repeating the story is really hard without quite like, reliving it in my head. There was also a friend with me at the time of this incident. And so, you know, even though we're not really in each other's lives anymore. I still want to be honoring to her and what I put out into the world. There is also some fear involved in this situation, you know, even though I'm not going to name any names or anything like that, there was always just this looming thought in the back of my head, like, what if those people watch my video and they come after me? And lastly, as weird as this sounds, as a lot of you probably might understand that as a woman, there's this part of you that actually carries this guilt that feels like because you aren't like completely innocent in the situation. You, in your mind, you had a part to play, therefore you deserved it. And I had to really reconcile through those feelings. This video is also not an endorsement for you to go out and to go to these types of festivals. My prayer for this video is that if I can just prevent one person from going through what I went through, I have done my job. At the end of this video, I'm gonna try to give you like a list of the best ways that you can protect yourself, but you're gonna learn a lot of it throughout my story. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm 29 years old right now, but at the time of the incident, I was around 21 or 22. At that time in my life, I was really big into going to music festivals. And as I said, specifically electronic music festivals, I had already been to a couple of them before this particular one. This festival was called Tomorrow World and it was on like the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia. We like booked our tickets through some club in Miami through like a friend that I had at the time. And they're the ones who like arranged the buses to and from the festival. And they bring you back to your hotel. And they also give you like roommates and all that. So I had a friend with me, but they also like assigned us random roommates. So we took our own car, we drove to Atlanta, and then we met up with the people at this club who booked everything for us. So here is already where a, um, a miracle happened in my opinion. Um, that morning, we were getting ready. We were in our bedroom, just like putting on our makeup, getting ready to go to the festival. And one of the girls asked, hey, do you think we could bring chapstick in or lip gloss? And another girl responded, no, we can't do that because apparently people are prone to like lace lipstick and chapstick with like acid. And I remember thinking to myself, huh, that's interesting. Little did I know that information was going to come in handy later that day. So the day started out pretty normal, pretty great. You know, we went to the festival, we were having a great day. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you. And this is just being very transparent. And this is what I was trying to explain in the beginning. Earlier in that day, I did take one ecstasy that was earlier in that day and so by the time that the evening was rolling around and into the night it was wearing off earlier in that day when we were told the schedule we were told a certain time to be back to the bus because obviously the buses are going to leave and go back to the hotel i don't know how it happened or what we were either told the wrong time or something i remember we were both like okay we need to leave right now from the area that we were at at the festival and we need to start heading back to the bus because we want to make sure we're there on time. So in our minds, like we were on track, like both her and I, like we heard the same thing. Like we couldn't both possibly have the time wrong, but I don't know. So we're going back to our bus and this is late at night and I can't, I can't really remember the exact time, but it was dark and it was nighttime and we're going back to the bus and um, they were leaving. And I need to give you a little bit of context. This festival isn't like in the middle of Atlanta. You are in a field in what seems like the middle of nowhere. And we were told no Ubers, no taxis, none of that can get through, which is why we had to take the bus. Okay, so unless you like had your own car or whatever. And we're panicking and so we're calling the people that we knew at the club and they're on the bus and we're like, hey, like we're here, like 
what's going on? They're like, yeah, well, we left. I'm like, can we, can you turn around? They're like, no, sorry, we can't turn around. And so we're like, what do we do? Okay, the temperature was dropping and it was starting to rain. And we're like, okay, okay, how do we figure this out? So we called one of the girls on the bus who was actually our roommate for the weekend. Um, so we call her and she was like, okay, I have a few numbers I can send you. I know a couple of people here and um, they might be able to give you a ride back to the hotel. And we're like, okay, awesome, great news, like, thank you. She sends us the numbers. First number we called, no answer. Second number we called, no answer. Third number we called, answer. And in fact, they seemed pretty ecstatic that we were calling and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can give you a ride, come on. We're like, awesome. Sounds good, thank you. And don't get me wrong, I was still a little nervous because it was just like people that we didn't know, but they, on the phone, the guy seemed really nice. And um, so we're like, well, what options do we really have? Because obviously we don't have a car and we can't sleep here and it's cold and it's raining and we need to get home. But what we did not know about this person is that um, the roommate that had given us that number or his number, she only met this person that day. We thought this was somebody that she knew because he played it off that way on the phone like that they are friends. We were like, oh, we're friends of blah, blah, blahs. And he was like, oh yeah, like acted like they've known each other for a long time. We find this person and um, he introduces us to like a lot of people, like, but like all men, like 10 dudes. I feel like there was one woman there at one point, but she left. We're like feeling uncomfortable. My friend and I are looking at each other because there's this like, big Mercedes like sprinter van that they were all getting into and they're like come on like we'll take you back to your hotel and just like you know telling us to get in this van and her and I looked at each other and we're like well we either trust this or like what what do we do it was one of those things where you like questioned your own feelings you're like is this real like is this is this safe like I I can't explain it, but like you question your own, we questioned our own gut, which I'll never do again. But we decided, okay. So we get into the van, they separated us. They put me in the back, essentially on this guy's lap, and then her in the front. And I'm telling you, there was like, this is a big van. There was like 10 dudes in this car. And one of the first things the guy that I was like, sitting essentially on like I had like one leg on him like it was weird and um and I was trying to like look out the window because I was like really nervous one of the first things he said to me is he looked at me and he's like we're gonna be really good friends tonight aren't we Jessica and I was like yeah like I don't even remember what I said but I was like ha, 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 ha you know like kind of laughing it off before we got going we were still sitting there and he offered me a bottle of water I had my own water on my bag and I think I initially declined. I was like, I have my own water. And he was like, are you sure? Like, this is fresh. This is a water bottle. Have this. And he was like, what is what's inside your bag? Uh, Cause I had a camel back on. And he was like, oh, are you drinking Molly water? And I was like, no. And um, he was like, just take the fresh water. And I was like, okay. So I drank it and I realized, I remember having this moment where I realized that like the lid had already been like cracked. And I was like, like I thought I thought this was a, a fresh bottle of water and it was weird that he said that too so we get driving and here is when um, the morning conversation saved me he took out chapstick and he was like my lips are really chapped and he looked at me and he's like are your lips chapped and I was like yeah I guess they could be and he was like you want some chapstick he literally took the chapstick and he put it on his wrist and he goes see it's chapstick. And I just froze and I said, no, because I learned just this morning that people lace it with drugs. And he started laughing at me and he repeats to the entire bus. He goes, 
Did you hear that, boys? Isn't that crazy? Some people lace chapstick with drugs and like they all started laughing. And I was like, oh, what is happening? You couldn't quite tell what was going on. You know, like you still weren't sure if you were just in your head or not. At one point, I remember the guy saying to me, oh, did you feel that poke? And I was like, what? And I was like, did you just poke me with something? Still don't know what he poked me with. It's dark, <laughs> you know, we're in this van and we're going and I'm still trusting, okay, they're taking me back to my hotel. They're taking me back to my hotel. And we're just, I'm looking out the window of the highway and our hotel was in downtown Atlanta. And I'm just looking out the window because I'm just trying to avoid what's going on in the vehicle because I was just so like scared. And I remember realizing that we were leaving Atlanta. I would notice that the signs weren't going downtown. And so I had to, I tried to text my friend and I remember just the text message was like, we're going the wrong way, we're going the wrong way, like like panicking because I'm like, please be getting these text messages, please. And I sucked it up and I had, I still consider this one of like the bravest moments of my life. And I was like, let's call her um, Ashley. And I was like, Ashley, we are on the wrong road and we needed to get on the right road. And she was like, what? I'm like, we're going the wrong way. I'm trying to like choose my words carefully. And I had my phone on airplane mode all day long so i had a full battery and i confirmed by looking at my gps and that indeed we were not going the right way and all those guys they jump on their phones and they all start texting each other like in this group chat and i'm like trying to look over at what they were saying and i can tell they were like freaking out like they were like okay like what's this girl doing like they kept driving and i remember very specifically the guy next to me said something in another language to the guy like way in the front seat. And the guy in the front seat said something like, yeah, right after we raped them behind the gas station. And that's when I was like, this isn't happening. This isn't happening. And I'm literally texting my friend, I'm like, danger, danger. We are in danger. We need to get out of here. We are in danger. And I repeated it to the guy next to me. I said, is this what he just said? And he was like, what do you think he said? And I was like, this is what he said. And he was like, no, I think you're just hearing things. He takes out his phone and like literally shows me his Instagram profile. And he was like showing me pictures of him and his nephew. And he was like, see, this is the kind of guy I am. Like, you think that this guy would do that to you? And I'm like, thinking, I don't even know you. Don't show me your Instagram. This is what I want you to understand is that these guys were clearly very well rehearsed. They weren't forceful in the sense of like, I wasn't shoved into the van. I wasn't, they gave me like seemingly like drugs willingly. You know what I mean? Like they were doing these things. And I believe it's because somehow this ever got back to the police that they could say that they were, that I was crazy and that I took those drugs myself and that they were just giving me a ride home. They were very good manipulators and they manipulated you that whole ride. You know what I mean? Like you're questioning yourself and your sanity the whole time. And then at that point, you know, those drugs that they gave me were starting to hit me and I was starting to feel weird and I was just off and I'm like, what's reality? What's not like, is this, happening. So at some point, because I still had my phone, um, and my friend's phone was dead at this point, they turn around. I remember them getting off the exit and turning around, and they started heading back towards downtown Atlanta. But instead of taking us to our hotel, they took us to their hotel. And I remember getting out of the Sprinter van and looking at the lights at this hotel and just feeling like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Me and my friend were reunited again. And at this point, she's picked up on everything too. It was hard because she's, she was very, a very chatty person and super friendly and she was, she was at the front and like it almost felt like she didn't, like for a long time for me in the back, I wasn't sure if she was understanding that we were in danger. And so it was a relief to know that when we both stepped off the Sprinter van that like we were on the same page and I was like, oh, thank God. We get out and then it was very cold, okay? And I'm not dressed appropriately. The guys kept trying to offer us things before we, we didn't go into the hotel. The guys kept trying to offer us stuff. They're like, here, take this water. Here, take this coat. Here, blah, blah, blah. And they're like trying to give us stuff and have us like take stuff or drink stuff or whatever, but like acting like they're doing it to be 
friendly. And I just was very thankful for her because she helped me keep my cool. She was like, just be cool. Like, just say no thank you. One of them overheard me saying like, I'm gonna call an Uber to get me back to my hotel. And he's like, I can call an Uber. I was like, no, I'm gonna call an Uber. You can tell they were not happy with the fact that I had a fully charged phone because things would not have ended the way they did had I had this phone. Her and I walk away from the group and I can tell that they were like suspicious of what we were doing, but I walk away and um, I call an Uber and you have to understand the level of paranoia that I had during this entire experience. Um, even when I called the Uber, I didn't believe it was the Uber. I was so convinced that they sent a driver around the corner to grab us and put us back in the car. Like, and I remember when the Uber came that we just like, we just got in as fast as we can and, and we had kind of like walked away from them and I can tell they were like watching us. I got in the Uber and I sh looked at the picture of the Uber driver and I looked at him like, is this you? Is this you? Like I, le I like needed them to prove their identification. And they were like, yes, yes, yes. And we, me and my friend just like, we sobbed and we were like, go, 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 go. Like you just, you just rescued us. You have no idea what you just did. I can imagine that Uber driver probably remembers that day too. And it's a weird thing when they, she dropped us off at the hotel and we're walking through the lobby. And at this point, you know, it's late. So I was like shocked that there were people still like, you know, sitting around in the lobby and we're dressed very, you know, inappropriately still. And just walking through there knowing like nobody had a clue of what we just went through. I had trouble like relaxing because I this whole time I'm thinking they're gonna find us, they're gonna find us, they're gonna come after us, they're gonna find out our room, they are gonna know where we're staying and um and you're still very drugged up at that point. And I don't know how, but it was just the grace of God, I think, that protected us from losing control. We get into the bedroom and we tell the girls what happened. And the roommate, that's when we found out from our roommate that she had just met that guy that day. And she was like, I am so sorry, I am so sorry, I am so sorry. And I have a very specific memory of just like getting in the shower and just looking at myself before I got in the shower and I just started crying because I just felt like so used. Like I couldn't understand how people could be so evil and just see me as not a person. That is the story. I probably miss details. It's hard to repeat without forgetting things. But I think you got the picture. Whew, I'm warm. I think you heard a lot and you learned a lot from all that, but time to give you some <laughs> strategies and some tips for protecting yourself. How to protect yourself at a music festival. Number one, keep your phone charged all day. I thought about that from the very beginning of my day. Again, I was like around 22 and I'm 29 now. Things have really changed. Now you have external battery packs. That wasn't really a thing as much when I was in my early 20s. So carry one of those around. Keep your phone charged. Put it on airplane mode. Use your Apple Watch. Make sure you have like find your friends on only 365. That way people can locate you if something did happen. At the very minimum, they'll know your last location. Number two, leave the festival early, you know, have plenty of time to plan, get out of there, figure out your ride situation. If you did the bus type of thing that we did, triple check on your times that you're supposed to be back. Number three, don't do drugs. You don't need them, don't do them. And do not accept drugs from people that you do not know. And in that same realm, number four, people lace things like chapstick. They also lace water. Do not accept water from strangers. At those kind of places, there are usually plenty of water stations. Stay hydrated, go fill them up yourself. Don't accept them from random people that you don't know. Number five, do not go to those kind of places alone. I am so thankful that I had a friend with me in that situation. We really did look out for each other. Number six, all those are important, but this one is very, very important, okay? So remember how I told you that that roommate had just met that guy that day. Be aware of people like him who was very literally poaching young women. From what I understand, he was kind of like the cool, like, well, seemingly like, 
fun, cool party promoter guy. And he would like stand outside of the stages. And what he did is to the girl that was my roommate, you know, he saw her and they were, they started talking and he was like, oh yeah, come back here. We have drinks. I'm gonna have access so you can go meet the DJs, all this stuff. He was literally out there to entice women to go back there and party with him. So the girl that was my roommate, she took that guy's number. She didn't end up going back with him. I think she was actually planning on possibly going to see him the next day. So beware of those people. The movies likes to glamorize, like running off with strangers. And I'm not saying every single person is bad, but I am just saying, wow, have your guard up. I'm actually grateful as weird as that sounds, that um, that it was me who went through this because I don't know if that roommate girl would have had the same luck. What would have happened if she met up with him the next day? Like, I don't know. To wrap things up, I don't go to those kind of places anymore. And not just because of what happened to me. I was looking for something in those experiences, meaning maybe of some sort. I've come to realize after going through that part of my life. The only thing that can really fulfill that void in my life is Christ. Going to those events, going to those things ultimately left me broken in the end. Though life isn't perfect, my life is so much better than it was. And if I didn't have a walk with Christ through all of that, I don't think I would have been able to heal the way that I have and the way that I'm able to tell you guys this story today. So if it was up to me, I would tell you Avoid those kind of places. Don't walk where it's slippery. But I also recognize the fact that my story can help somebody else. Thank you for watching. I know it wasn't the most like uplifting video that you've probably ever heard, but um, it is my story. It's a part of who I am. Give it a like, um, subscribe to my channel, and thank you for watching.